The McDonnell Douglas F-4 Phantom II is probably the most famous jet fighter of the Vietnam War. Able to fly combat air patrol and ground strikes with equal command, the F-4 was the only jet fighter to be put into service by the U.S. Air Force, the Marine Corps, and the Navy. During the 1960s and early 70s, many other fighters could match one or two of the F-4's capabilities, but none could do everything as well as the F-4 did. The Navy was responsible for the initial development of the F-4, the first of which was called the F-4B. As with today's F-14 Tomcat, the Navy specified that the F-4 was to be strictly a carrier-based interceptor armed with air-to-air -air missiles and to be flown by a pilot and a dedicated weapons systems officer. However, the military establishment, with their need for a cost-effective jet-powered attack platform for non-nuclear bombs, Envision that the F-4's fundamental design could be adapted relatively easily for other roles, too. In time, the F-4 was recast not only for close air support and tactical strikes, but for specialized missions, such as reconnaissance with the RF-4 version, and for wild weasel attacks with the F-4G configuration, in which the aircraft was specially equipped with a myriad of electronic warfare devices for the destruction of enemy surface-to-air missile installations. For ground troops serving in Vietnam, the sight of F-4 Phantoms in the sky would be a welcome sight. During the Vietnam War, as with most wars in history, the most decisive battles were fought on land. Helicopters, a new instrument to the forward edge of battle area, were soon essential to quickly move troops and supplies as well as provide close air support when needed. In January 1968, the most famous single battle of the Vietnam War began. Known as the Siege of Khe Sanh, it lasted for 66 days. The Khe Sanh Marine Base was strategically located near both the demilitarized zone and the Ho Chi Minh Trail. The North Vietnamese regulars combined forces with Viet Cong guerrillas to cut off the base from reinforcements and attack the Marines until victory was achieved. If the Communists were to defeat the Marines, as they defeated the French forces during the 1954 Battle of Dien Bien Phu, they would have open access to the South for further infiltrations and an eventual all-out invasion. Therefore, to hold on to Khe Sanh was of paramount importance, not only to the Marines stationed there, but also to the future of South Vietnam. F-4 Phantoms from each service were to play a vital role in relieving the base from this crushing siege. Reconnaissance units determined that the Viet Cong had completely surrounded the base perimeter. Air Force and Navy F-4s were soon flying to Khe Sanh loaded with missiles, rockets, and bombs. As Khe Sanh was completely cut off from all ground access, resupply by air was imperative. The Marines dug in for a long and arduous battle. The North Vietnamese artillery was soon to strike hard, and the Marines would not be caught unprepared.
Marine F-4s took off from Da Nang and Chu Lai to support their fellow soldiers under fire. Resupply efforts continued despite the threat of anti-aircraft fire. But it soon became necessary to parachute supplies to the base, as it was too risky for any cargo planes to land. While flying over South Vietnam, the F-4s had achieved air superiority. This was not always the case in missions conducted across the DMZ, as North Vietnamese pilots flying MiG-17 and MiG-21 fighters were sometimes more than able adversaries. The highly maneuverable MiGs made the F-4 crews use all of their flying skills and aircraft's high-speed performance envelope in order to defeat them. On the average, the F-4 Phantoms enjoyed a kill-to-loss ratio greater than 5 to 1. Their most effective weapons were the AIM-9 Sidewinder heat-seeking missile and the 20mm cannon. General Electric J-79 turbojet engines powered the F-4 to a top airspeed of Mach 2.2. If the F-4 was needed for an extended combat air patrol, fighter escort, or close air support mission, refueling from KC-135 tankers was necessary. Meanwhile, in late January 1968, the Tet Offensive had begun to spread to other parts of South Vietnam. The city of Hue was the old imperial capital of Vietnam, and as such, was of great psychological value to the communists. Hue was perhaps the only target in South Vietnam immune from F-4 airstrikes, as the preservation of the ancient city's architecture was of some importance. Therefore, it was necessary for Marine and Army units to fight house by house and block by block to retake it. At Quezon, F-4 Phantoms arrived strafing, firing rockets and dropping bombs on North Vietnamese Army and Viet Cong positions with a ferocity not seen by the Marines since World War II.
Forward air controllers piloting Cessna 01 bird dogs were invaluable to the F-4s. With an intimate knowledge of the terrain and enemy positions, the O-1s fired phosphorus rocket markers, which made F-4 target acquisition easy. Lethal 23 and 37 mm anti-aircraft artillery fire was quite heavy at times in the north and caused the loss of many U.S. aircraft. Given the opportunity, F-4s and other attack aircraft could destroy most of the concentrated anti-air fixtures. But the intermittent nature of these missions allowed the North Vietnamese ample time to rebuild their air defenses. Because of this, many pilots were shot down during strike missions over North Vietnam, and if they survived, ended up as prisoners of war. Air to ground missiles such as the TV guided walleye were extremely accurate in attacking targets like this North Vietnamese bridge.
bombing of enemy positions at Quezon by F-4s was continuous, but it was not enough to ensure a Marine victory. From bases in faraway Okinawa, Guam, and Thailand, flights of B-52 strategic bombers took off laden with ordnance many times that carried by F-4s. South Vietnamese Highway 9 to Khe Sanh was busy again as fresh Marines replaced the tired few who had fought so hard for so long. The Marines had lived up to the high standards that they have always set for themselves and had every reason to be proud of what they accomplished. Khe Sanh would continue to serve as a Marine base until they withdrew at the end of U.S. involvement in the war. The battle for Quezon was a shining moment for U.S. air power, too. The F-4 Phantoms were of crucial importance in achieving this victory. Whether land or carrier-based, flying as an interceptor, strike fighter, reconnaissance aircraft, or wild weasel, the F-4s were effective in every role required of them, and many are still flying today. <laughs> 